my name is Teresa Palkovic and I'm a physical therapist. I'm here to talk to you today about back pain and sciatica. Approximately 7% of the American population will suffer back pain or pain going down their leg at some point in their lifetime. Oftentimes, they're really not sure what the problem or the cause might be. They go to their doctor, the doctor says, oh, they have a herniated disc or they have sciatica or they have degenerative disc disease or spinal stenosis. And those are all words that are very difficult to understand and you kind of walk away from your doctor thinking, well, what does that really mean? So what we're gonna do today is just talk about the reasons why you might have back pain or pain radiating down your leg. Sciatica has become a catch-all term for any pain that starts at the buttock and travels all the way down to your foot. In some cases, it might only go to your knee. In other cases, it might go to your big toe. Sometimes it might only go to your heel. It may or may not be accompanied by numbness or tingling in the leg or foot. It may or may not be accompanied by um, weakness. You might notice some difficulty walking or some changes in your balance. You may or may not have back pain associated with the leg pain. Sometimes back pain occurs by itself. Sometimes they occur in combination. Symptoms of sciatica are pain in the buttock or the lower back that radiates down the back of the leg, the outside of the leg, or the front of the leg. You can have weakness, difficulty wa walking on stairs or inclines, um, or electrical shock type feelings um, in your leg. Back pain and sciatica can be caused for a number of reasons. The first reason may be a herniated disc. The second reason might be central or neuroforamal spinal stenosis. The third could be irritation of nerve roots. The fourth could be a malalignment of the pelvic girdle. The fifth could be thoracolumbar syndrome. Six could be piriformis syndrome, or your pain could simply be just due to prolonged sitting. This is your lumbar spine. It's made up of the last five vertebrae in your spine. And between each of those vertebrae, there's a disc. The disc has a fibrous outer surface, and then the inner surface is kind of spongy, like a balloon. A herniated disc occurs when that fibrous material wears down, and then the central or soft, squishy stuff bulges out. When that occurs, as you can see, you have nerves that come out between each one of these levels in your spine. When you get a herniated disc, that disc presses against the nerve and can give you symptoms such as numbness or tingling. It can give you symptoms of burning pain. It can give you uh, weakness. Maybe you can't wiggle your toes or difficulty um, straightening your knee completely. It could give you pain in that area. It could give you a loss of reflexes. Any one of those things are a sign that you might have pressure on the nerve and then that's causing pain and dysfunction in your leg. The second cause of sciatica or back pain could be stenosis. These little areas right here between each vertebrae are called the foramina. When you develop bone stir spurs or degenerative arthritis in your spine, little spurs develop in these spaces. And so then the pressure from those little spurs that are now in that space can be put on the nerve when you move a certain way and give you a sharp type pain shooting down into your legs or when you move a certain way it can give you pressure on the nerve and cause you to get back pain that goes down your legs and becomes worse and worse the longer you stand or walk. A third reason for back pain or sciatica could be irritation of these nerves simply because you've overworked the muscles. So think about um, when you hit your funny bone. You put pressure on it or you lean on your elbow too long and you get numbness or tingling in your leg, I mean in your arm. Well, that can occur actually with, at this level if you have a lot of muscle tension because that muscle tension is gonna squeeze off that nerve and it's gonna cause you to have symptoms, could be numbness, tingling, pain, that's gonna radiate down the pathway that that nerve follows. <laughs> The next reason would be malalignment of the pelvic girdle. The pelvic girdle is made up of your ilium, which are these two bones here, and your sacrum or tailbone. Contrary to popular belief, these, these joints, these are actual joints that can move. So if you have an ilium that either gets 
pushed up or forward or backward, or if your tailbone or sacrum gets cocked to one side or the other, then you can have pain because what happens is either the nerves that are running through those tissues are being pinched or stretched or the actual muscles are in spasm and trying to correct themselves and so then you get pain and inflammation and you can get irritation of the sciatic nerve. Sciatic, sciatic nerve is the longest nerve in the body. It comes off of these five levels of your lumbar spine. It joins together as a band coming through this and comes out through this area right here which is called your ischium and the muscle that lays over that is your piriformis. Piriformis syndrome is another reason why you could have pain um, or numbness tingling in your leg because as the sciatic nerve travels through that muscle, if that muscle is in spasm because these bones are not aligned and it spasms back, then it's going to pinch that nerve and give you those symptoms down your leg. Another reason for um, back pain and particularly knee or thigh pain is thoracolumbar syndrome. The thoracolumbar junction is the area where your ribs, the last of your ribs, that's the lower thoracic area, and the beginning of your lumbar spine, it's right at that junction between your 12th rib, or your last rib, and your first lumbar spine. In that area, this can become malaligned very easily because that's where all of your rotation and side bend occurs. So sometimes, because if, if you're performing a repetitive activity, like raking, or on your job, where you're repetitively bending and standing up, what happens is that area becomes too mobile. And so then you bend over and then you get an alignment issue. And that alignment issue causes the nerve to be pinched off. And then that causes pain that radiates down the leg. The important thing to remember when you're looking at the spine is, is that each level of the spine correlates with a different area of your leg. So when you're having pain, say, or a problem, whether it be a herniated disc, whether it be muscle spasm, whether it be a thoracolumbar syndrome, if you're having a problem in the upper lumbar area, then usually your pain is going to be between your hip and your knee. When you're having a problem in your lower lumbar area, that pain is going to be between your knee and your foot. What often happens is people will come to us in physical therapy and they'll say, my doctor says I have herniated disc and I'm going to need surgery. And you look at their MRI and the MRI says that they have an L5-S1 disc herniation would be right here at this junction. Now an L5-S1 herniation correlates with problems at your foot, but the patient may be coming to me and saying, I'm having all this pain in my knee and in my hip. So when we look at these problems, we have to look at what level is involved and whether your symptoms correlate with that level. We also have to look at how your movement pattern changes your pain. We also have to look at different characteristics, whether the pain is burning, whether it's tingling, whether it's causing a loss of sensation. There are lots of different reasons why this could be going on. Unfortunately, MRIs and x-rays are about only about 30% reliable for actually diagnosing the actual cause of, of the pain that you're experiencing. So in physical therapy, we do a thorough evaluation of you to determine what the source of the pain might be and how that, the characteristics of that pain, how that can change with different activities that we have you do, and then design a treatment program around that for you. For more information about any one of these conditions, you can click on to our additional videos where we'll be going into um, further explanation of what your signs and symptoms might be and how you can determine if the exercises um, that we have outlined are appropriate for your condition.